hello everyone very welcome to the channel in this video i am going to share with you a very exciting new project called as zml zml is a high performance ai inference stack and it is built with some of the technologies which i think you might not have heard of i will be not only explaining those technologies i will also be going through this zml in as simple way as possible plus we will also do some inference with it and then we will play around with this new inference stack before i do that let me give a huge shout out to mass compute who are sponsoring the vm and gpu for this video if you're looking to rent a gpu on good prices i will drop the link to their website in video's description plus i'm also going to give you a coupon code of 50 percent discount on a range of gpus so coming back to this zml what exactly this zml is as i said it is an inference stack that helps running models ai models and particularly the neural networks it also enables you to go through the life cycle of the model you can even create your own model with it and then play around with it plus the good thing about it is that it offers you to do the sharding of a single model across multiple gpu providers that's correct so you can pick a model you can split that model into different pieces and then you can run one piece of the same model on amd gpu card one piece on nvidia gpu card and then one piece on tpus from google and then it is going to collate or aggregate the output and give it back to you and most of the stuff is handled by this zml in the background it does quite a lot of heavy lifting still a very new project still evolving so expect some roadblocks but i'm very hopeful about this project that uh, if it works it is going to be a new window a new era in distributed uh, ai computing i think that will be really amazing now um, let's try to get this thing installed and then because I believe that this, this is one of those projects where it is always good idea to implement it and then learn it by doing other, you know, if I try to explain it, I think it is going to get a bit cumbersome. So let me take you to my terminal. Let me clear the screen. By the way, I'm using Ubuntu 22.04 as I always use for this sort of stuff. And it will only run on Mac and Linux, no Windows. So this is my Ubuntu 22.04 and this is my GPU card, NVIDIA RTX A6000, courtesy mass compute with 48 GPU of VRAM. Okay, so that is done. And I think you can even run it on AMD GPU and on TPUs. First step which we need to do is to git clone the repo of this ZML and I will drop the link to it in video's description. That is done. Let's cd into it. And that is also done. Now, one thing we would need to install here is Bazel. So what is Bazel? Bazel is an open source build tool which has been developed by Google. Bazel automates compilation and dependency management for multi-language project. And that emphasizes scalability, speed, and reproducibility across various platforms and environment. The reason why we are using Bazel here, or ZML is using Bazel here, is because this whole ZML is based on Zig language. Z, Zig is Z-I-G. Zig is a general purpose programming language which prioritizes simplicity, reliability, and performance. It is basically an easy alternative of C language. So it primarily replaces C and provides a modern alternative with memory safety, features, efficient compilation and interoperability with the previous C libraries. So that is what we are going to use. Now another thing it uses, uh, it called as MLIR, which is basically machine learning intermediate representation. MLIR is an open source intermediate representation for machine learning models and algorithm. What it does is it provides a flexible platform agnostic framework for optimizing, transforming and compiling all of these machine learning models. So this is what we are going to use, but don't worry too much about it. You're not going to go into the uh, machine learning level or anything like that. It is easier done than said. Okay, so 
let's go back to our installation so you see i already have git clone the repo we are in that zml repo next step we need to do is to make sure that we install bazel which is a build tool by the google so first let's download the bazel with curl let's okay so it says that it couldn't write it and it okay so i think i'm going to maybe use sudo here because it doesn't have permission okay this time it worked and now let's change it I'm, i mean the permissions i'm just going to say sudo and then i'm just going to change the permission of it that is done so that is all there is to it when it comes to installing bezel here so let me clear the screen now once that's done let me show you how can we run a pre-packaged model with this zml there are various examples here so for instance if you run want to run the llama model we can try out the tiny llama which is already present in their example so if you go to examples directory here and then from there in order to run this all you need to do is to the llama model i mean is to run this command bezel run dash c opt and then we are just giving it llama model and then we are calling it with this tiny llama model which has been trained by andrich karpathy so let me run it so as soon as you run it it is going to download it so let's wait for it to finish downloading it is extracting the bezel installation let's wait for it and the first time you might have to wait for the compilation to finish and that is going to take a fair bit of time so let's wait And there you go so after a few minutes it has responded back with this prompt where it is just completing a story from that tiny llama that this is the prompt that once upon a time there was a little girl named lily then it has tokenized that prompt and then given us the answer there's a lot of other stuff which you can go through if you're interested in how these tensors and all this stuff work but if you're not you don't have to really worry about it and as I said, it takes long time first time, but once it is compiled and loaded, you can do lightning fast inference, something like this, like with the same model. If I give it this prompt once upon a time, there was a cute little dragon and run it. There you go. How quick that is. It has even compiled the model in just 250 millisecond. This was the prompt. And then this is the response here about the dragon. And it has generated these many tokens in this token. And as I said earlier, you can run it on AMD, TPU or wherever you like. Similarly, if you want to run it on AMD's ROCM, then you can simply run the same command, but by specifying the runtime to ROCM to true, or if you just want to go with NVIDIA's CUDA, just put CUDA here instead of ROCM or for TPU, just put in TPU. Now, as I mentioned earlier, it is quite easy to create your own model with this ZML. Let me show you how. They have provided an example, so I'll show you that because it makes it so clear as how to create a model. And as I mentioned earlier, we are using Zig programming language for that. And this is the program, the main.zig, in order to create the model. And then in order to build it, you would need to create this build.bazel file. So I'm not going, going into way more detail into the code because that really goes into quite nitty gritty. But what is happening here is that it is using few of the basic ZML fundamentals. In ZML, they have something called as a module which represent the AI model and they are defining the module here. And that mod model or module is defined as a ZIG struct, which is a structure that is a data structure in that zig programming language similar to what we have in c language this struct can contain tensor fields that are used for computation such as weights and biases it also lets you define a forward function of a module and that actually computes it by calling tensor operations like add dot general and then there are a lot of nitty gritties around there 
ZML creates an MLIR representation of the computation where they compile the module and now you know what MLIR is which I described at the start of the video. For compilation only the shapes of all tensor must be known and that is a big thing. So what this ZML is doing it is just going through the whole life cycle of a model. So what it does is you give it a model file it reads the shapes of the weights but leaves the weights on the disk. And then using the loaded shapes and optional metadata, it instantiates a model struct with tensors representing the shape and layout of each layer of the neural network. It then compiles the model struct and its forward function into an accelerator, specific executable, and then it forward function describes the mathematical operation corresponding to the model inference. Then we load the model weights from disk onto the accelerator memory bind the model weights to the executable it could be CUDA it could be TPU and then it loads some user inputs and copy them to the accelerator call the executable fetch the return model output and when all the user inputs have been processed it frees the executable resources so it does the proper memory management without any leakage so if you go through this code <clears throat> this code is uh, pretty interesting I would say so for example at the very start, it is starting by uh, importing ZML and other modules. And then it is defining the model from the model definition, as you can see here. Now, these are just struct. So model is just a struct with this uh, forward function, this fn forward. And then in this forward function, it typically takes tensors as input and return tensors. And there are uh, also in the model tensor may be optional it depends on your own stuff and then it adds the main function all the code as you can see is async because we need to provide um, it async so that it will wait if you are running it in a distributed way and all this main function is doing it is creating an allocator and an async main thread that executes their async main function that's it so if you go through it, this async main function is a boilerplate that provides a general purpose allocator and for convenience, an arena allocator that will use the later one. The advantage of this allocator is that you don't need to deallocate individual allocations and you can simply call this D in it to deinitialize the entire arena. So it is doing proper management here. It is also defining some of the um, buffer stores and that sort of stuff because we need to set up the concrete weight and bias tensors for their model. So we would lo load them from the disk. But as this example doesn't really deal with stored weight, so we are just going to create a buffer store manually containing the host buffers, as you can see. And then it's all on CPU for both the weights and biases. And then this is the whole, and it is very, very well commented. You can just simply replace it with your own. And then all it is doing, it is just defining some of the shapes and stuff. And the weights are 222 and from there we are just going to print the result of this simple multiplication and addition so and it is going to use this bazel file and of course you would need to aware of bazel how to compile it but this code normally remains the same you just have to change few of the stuff not much if you're aware of bazel and so let me try to run it now in order to run it all you need to do go to the root of this repo call this simple simple layer and by the way simple layer is just a model uh, this is our model's name because the directory name is simple layer you can just call it anything so if i run it it has loaded the model and look at the speed this is the result of our own model so with the help of zml we have also created our own model and then we have done the inference with this stack how cool is that so all in all, a really impressive project and as I said, very early days, play around with it. And if you really want to get into the nitty gritty of all of this machine learning and how these models are working, this forward feed and all this tensors and all that stuff, this is one advantage of getting your hand dirty. Plus if you are looking for some distributed GPU computing, this is another one. If you want some interoperability between CUDA, AMD and a TPU this is this could be a good choice so play around with it let me know what do you think if you like the content please consider subscribing to the channel if you are already subscribed please share it among your network as it helps a lot thank you for watching